You're about to discover the unusual, crazy, and even bizarre ways that people smuggle alcohol onto a cruise. I'm Gary Bemidge, and this is another of my tips for travelers. In this video, I'm going to talk about the lengths that people will go to to smuggle alcohol on board a cruise ship. Now, why do people do it? Well, simply because the cost of drinking on board a ship is getting more and more expensive. I'm not saying that you should be smuggling alcohol on board a cruise ship. It's just something that I've seen happening more and more. Probably the longest and most established way of smuggling booze on board is by taking existing toiletries and putting booze in them. The most popular of these is mouthwash. So what people are doing is buying a mouthwash, emptying it out, cleaning it out, putting a clear liquid in, and then using food coloring dye to make it look like an existing bottle of mouthwash. There are also some mouthwash bottles which are not clear, and those are even more popular because it's even harder to see the product inside. And of course, getting the color of the mouthwash looking right is a real challenge. But certainly, using existing toiletries, emptying them out and replacing them is a long established way of doing it, and mouthwash is the most popular of all of these. For those people that don't want to go as far as using existing toiletries, there's a whole range of bottles that you can buy that recreate toiletries that come empty. They also have little seals that you can then put on the top so it looks like unopened bottles. So the wide range of bottles that look like established and existing toiletries that you can then fill with alcohol. Things I've come across, for example, are sunscreen bottles, normal toiletry bottles, shampoo. You can even buy deodorant cans which you can fill with alcohol and even if you want to go a little bit further there are products that look like tampons. Another very long and well established way of bringing booze on board a cruise ship is what's known as rum runners. These are basically little plastic pouches which you can then fill with booze, put a screw cap on and then slide within your existing luggage. They are very very popular and certainly are one of the things that people use most often to bring booze on board. The next two ways that people use to smuggle booze on board probably verge into the secret service spy type territory because they're recreating products which are fake products. The first of these is around luggage. One of the most interesting ones that I came across is a rucksack. This rucksack then has secret pouches which you can then fill up with booze. Very much linked to that, there are those messenger style bags again, which have secret pouches. And then probably one of the more practical ones, if you are actually going on a cruise somewhere warm, are tote bags. Again, within the tote bags, they look like designer tote bags. They look like just the normal tote bags that you can buy, but they have, again, secret pouches in that you fill with booze. So there's a whole range of luggage that you can bring on board, both in terms of helping you carry stuff on board, but with secret pouches to bring in booze. One of the most unusual and fun areas that it, I've discovered people smuggle booze on is with a whole range of fake accessories. And again, there is a huge range of these and there are companies specifically making these fake accessories to help people smuggle in booze. Some of the most interesting ones that I've come across are umbrellas, which are basically a storage container for booze, even a hairbrush, you can get cameras, binoculars, even a smartphone and a power pack, shoe trees, which you can then put in shoes, and what we would call as bum bags, or in the US are called fanny packs. So there's a whole range of accessories and luggage that are created to help people smuggle booze. And as I said, it does feel a little bit like you're verging on the spy territory with secret devices that double up as something else. One of the things I found really interesting is that clearly the smuggling of booze has become such a big thing that there are companies emerging that are just existing to create products to help people smuggle booze on board. Another thing that people use to smuggle booze is actually clothing. So there's a range of clothing which are designed to have various pouches where you can smuggle in booze. There are two main areas that I came across that people are using to do this. First of those are a bra which has various pouches in which you fill with booze. And then for gentlemen, there are shorts which have secret pouches in. So people are even going as far as wearing the booze that they smuggle onto a cruise ship. There are two other simpler and even more practical ways that people are using, which probably have a higher chance of actually being discovered and caught by the security people. The first of those is miniatures. So people are basically buying those small little miniature bottles, you know, the sort you often get 
on an aeroplane that you can buy in various liquor stores and they're basically bringing in lots of little miniatures and stuffing those around their luggage. So those then are the main devices and techniques that people are using. But how are they actually ensuring that they don't get caught? There's a couple of things that I've seen people do and also seen a lot of people talk about when they're bringing or trying to bring booze on board. Of course, the first thing to remember is that most cruise lines allow you to bring on a certain amount of booze. So most cruise lines will allow you to bring either say one or two bottles of wine on board as long as you drink that within your cabin. If you take it in the restaurants, they will charge you a corkage charge. So the first thing that people are doing is bringing that on board. The next thing they're doing is using a number of techniques to ensure that they don't get caught. The first of those is making sure that they spread what they're bringing around their luggage. So if they're traveling with a couple of people, they're not putting it all in one suitcase. They're putting some in their hand luggage, some in one suitcase, some in another suitcase. So they're spreading it around. So I guess even if one person gets caught, they're hoping that the other people will still get some stuff through. The other thing I'm seeing people doing and also talking about is if they are trying to smuggle booze on board, they put in their checked baggage. Now those bags do get screened, but when you go through the personal security, often there may be more searches of bags. So people are tending to put their stuff into their checked on bags. And that's what they're telling me the way that they normally find that they are not getting caught. The other thing that people tell me they do if they do bring on board alcohol in one of these ways is of course you can largely only drink it in your cabin. You can't walk around the ship with it. So people are then doing other things like they're then bringing their own reusable water bottles and putting their booze in there so they can take it around the ship and on excursions. So I'm not saying or encouraging people to smuggle booze on board. It's just one of those trends that I've seen happening more and more and more. In fact, as I've mentioned, it's become so big that there's companies setting up and making products to help people smuggle booze on board. If you want a stress-free holiday, of course, don't smuggle booze on board, buy your drinks, bring the allowance on board, and even perhaps take a look at drinks packages. Although, watch my other video about why you shouldn't buy a drinks package because you could find it is not good value for you at all. I have loads of other videos and tips about cruising, so why not watch another one of those right now?